Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Rocco. I hope you're doing well. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be looking at cameras and we're going to show you how to add a camera into a scene and then to look at a few of the basic advantages that you get from using a camera rather than using the perspective view when it comes to rendering out your images. Now, when we first come into Daz or we, we, we load a scene in like I've done here, we will be looking through what's known as the perspective view. And you can see that up here in the little camera selector box in the top right of our viewport. And the perspective view is a camera, uh, but it's a camera really that we should just be using to set up our scenes and to have a look around in and, and try to find good angles and good for this and good for that. Uh, we shouldn't really be rendering through the perspective view. Uh, but it is a camera, but it is limiting a few of its functions and a few of the things that we can do with it. But it's fine for setting up our scene so we could scroll around uh, as you would normally do or move it around or zoom in and out. I'm using the mouse button there and we can set up our scenes and our models and our environments like what I've done here, uh, where we've got our model. She's all suited and booted and ready for war and ready for action and ready uh, to be rendered out but for us to do that what we're going to need first is we're going to need to add a camera into our scene and this is the first thing that we're going to do now there are a couple of ways that we can do this we can come up to our toolbar at the top yours may be positioned slightly differently but we can come up to the toolbar at the top and we can look for this little icon here which is a an old hollywood style camera as you can see there or alternatively if we can come up to the create menu at the top give it a click and there is the new camera that we can place into our scene or that will allow us to place into our scene now here's a little trick that i often use and it, it's probably the best way to put a camera into a scene we can use our perspective view to position just where we want our camera to be let's say more or less in front of our model put it about there let's say that and then what we can do we can come up to create new camera or select the little icon which i showed earlier and what happens is this little dialog box opens up now you can ignore the top bit name label will allow us to to name our camera so let's say i wanted to name it to main camera just to separate it out from other cameras that we might have out in our scene then we have these little options that we've got down below apply default settings what that does if you can see it's automatically selected it what that does is when we click accept it will place the camera at the the world locates uh, location of zero 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 so basically right in the middle of our scene which would be down here probably at our model's feet that's not a good thing that we want unless we want to move the camera around the next option down copy active view is whatever we would have selected in our scene it will place a camera at that point so if we were to have a, a the cube down here if we were to give that a click and then we would uh, to, to select copy active view and it accept it would place the camera at the position of where the cube is uh, but what i'm going to do is i'm going to go for the third option which is apply active viewport transforms and what this does it's going to put the camera right where we have our perspective view right now so that we it will encompass the same uh images or the same dimensions that we can see in the viewport where we're looking through the perspective camera so if i hit now accept on that you can see that these four little diagonal lines and this little dot has appeared what they are is that that's just to say that we're looking at the camera so if we were to scroll back with our perspective view you can see that the uh camera that we've just added into the scene was at the position where our perspective view was at just a moment ago now if we were to look up into our scene tab up here you can see the camera that we've just created up here we called it main camera and you can see it there and what we're able to do we're able to move that camera around like we could any other object in our scene as you can see it's selected and we've got the gadgets that we can use to move it around if we so wish i'm going to take it back to where it was because that's where we'd set up just by hitting uh, control z or control z and, and undoing our actions uh, so it's just like any other object in any scene uh, and we can see it right there pointing at our model now if we want to look through that camera we can come up to the the selection box up the top where it says perspective view give it a click and there you can see the the main camera now listed in our views in our our you know cameras that we can look through and if we give it a click 
we can see then it's in the position that we were at with our perspective view when we set that camera up and that is all there is really to adding cameras to our scene if we wanted to see what things look like through that camera we can come up to the little uh, icon next to the camera selector come down to nvidia iray if you're able to run iray and give it a click and there is our scene through the lens of a camera uh, now that's great we could do that with the perspective view and it would look exactly the same uh, however there are a few things that we can do with cameras that we've been created and put into the scene that we're not able to do with a perspective view one of those things incidentally is a thing that i just did a couple of moments ago where i moved the camera about and then used undo to put the to undo the movements that i've done you can't do that with a perspective view so if you've got a camera set up in a position that you want to be able to see through and then you're accidentally moving you think oh where was it set up you can use the undo uh, and because the camera's just like any other item in your scene but you won't be able to do that with a perspective camera so have a main camera set up and then you can move it around practice undo do whatever you want with it just like you can every other item or object in your scene uh, so yes we can do other things also with a main camera which which we are now going to take a quick look at now you will notice down here there's a series of tabs and there's one automatically selected there when i place the camera into the scene called cameras uh, if yours is not automatically selected just select it it's fine if it's not there incidentally you can always come up to windows come to panes and then you'll be able to find it in this list down here give it a click and then just drag it into place so yeah so this camera um, tab wants to be open and once we've got it open what we want to do is make sure we've got our camera selected the one that we're working with and then these options will be presented to us now i'll give you the heads up here there's a lot of things in this in this section here which you will never ever use there's things in here that are unfathomable unless you are a camera engineer or a photographer of the highest order most of the stuff in these things won't make any sense so just ignore them the ones that you want to be taking note of are the one that i've got highlighted there camera the headlamp one and also this one called dimensions i'll quickly have a word on headlamp you'll see up here it says headlamp mode auto uh, what you want to do is make sure either it's off here or if you come over in your render render settings make sure in your general tab that the auto headlamp is set to never and the reason for that is if you don't have any artificial lighting in your scene anything like a, a point light or a spotlight daz will automatically turn a, a spotlight on top of uh, your camera shining out at your model it's not a good look you'll get some gnarly images with it uh, and so you want to turn the auto headlamp off either turn it off here in the render settings i've always got it there permanently or turn it off on your own individual camera uh, you won't you won't give a good look trust me so that's the first thing that you need to, to, to worry about with cameras turn the headlamp off now the next thing that we're going to look at with cameras is probably the most important uh, options that we've got down here and that is on this camera uh, section itself uh, it will automatically come with perspective as on keep it like that you never ever want to change that but then we come down to some basic camera functions if you've ever worked with a camera before uh a, you know, whether it's a, a movie camera or a you know a still image camera or even your phone you will probably recognize some of these things uh the first one is your focal length which is your main one the frame width and the focal length work the same i'll just talk about the focal length so we're not just repeating ourselves over and over what the focal length does is basically the zoom element on our camera yes we can move in and out uh with our mouse button or with the 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 camera control icon up there uh, or we can use an actual focal zoom lens on our camera now you're probably better off using the focal length for a number of reasons for it uh some of the technical ones one for instance you can get rid of fisheye that's one good reason for it there'll be a video up in the top right hand corner there that you can take a look at with that as it will flatten out the image a little bit if you zoom in and you might get rid of a fish a fisheye effect but also it, it's 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 the correct way of doing it i mean yes you can always walk closer to the the person that you're trying to photograph in real life or you can stick a, a zoom lens on the front but the focal length quite an important one is you can get some you know clever little effects at times so what i'm going to do in just this instance i'm just going to turn it into 100 and what you'll notice in the viewport is the viewport will zoom in a little bit onto our model 
Uh, it's zoomed in quite a bit. So what I am going to do is just step back a little bit with our camera. That's me just using the mouse mouse wheel to just to step back away from the camera uh, from our model a little bit. Uh, so focal length important. Try using it if you can if you can use it. Uh, it will change your images ever so slightly. It will give a better look rather than zooming in and out with the controls or the icons over here. Now the next major feature and certainly an advantage that you can get with cameras over the perspective view is the application of depth of field. Uh, every image looks better with a little bit of depth of field to it, even if it's just a tiny little bit. Uh, what depth of field does it allows us to, to guide the viewer into the parts of the image that we want to look at. So for instance, we'd want to look at our model here, we wouldn't want to look at the background. Uh, now, what we need to do to be able to do this is set up the depth of field there to turn it on, and then we need to play with the focal distance and the f-stop, uh, which if you've never touched these things before, that might be all mumbo jumbo. I have done a whole video again on depth of field, so take a look at that up in the top, top right if you can. But I'll briefly just uh, have a quick glance at it here. So what happens is if we turn depth of field on and take an, uh, keep your eye on the view for, uh, the viewport for a moment, Everything's gone blurry there because the focal distance is set at something where set at a, a number or a value that means that our model isn't in focus. So what we need to be able to do to, to get her into focus is click on the drop down, just pop into our perspective view again. And if we just scroll around slightly, again, make sure you've got your camera selected. You can see we've got our model there and we can see we've got this little thing over here if we just zoom a little bit further over i can't the background's in the way uh but you can see it's like there's two planes there's a plane here this front one and then this there's this plane at the back now basically anything that falls within those two planes is going to be in focus and we can change that by coming to this focal distance slider here if we slide it in this way you can see these planes are now moving back towards our character Again, I'll just center her up a little bit. So we can position those planes exactly where our character is. And if we look around, you can see she's contained now within this funny shaped rectangle that exists. I'll get her more or less in the center. She's now placed within that focal zone within that camera's, you know, in that box or in that focal zone of the camera. So if we now come back to our camera, you can see that she's now back in focus. And if you look closer, you'll, the background will be slightly out of focus. If we turn it off and then turn it back on, it's it's very subtle in this case. If I had a better background, you would be able to see. So what we'll do to demonstrate that is we will change this f-stop that we've got down here. Now what the f-stop does, if we just come back around here, what the f-stop does, it narrows the, the distance between these two planes. So if we start to to bring it down a little bit, as you can see, we are narrowing uh, the amount of uh, space that was in focus. So I'll just take it down to a set five, and then we move out again uh, to get her face in focus, and then come back around to the main camera. You can now start to see that her leg, because it's not in that box, is now slightly blurred, slightly out of focus. And what we're doing, the, the parts that were in that box, where a face was, for instance, is now in focus, and it's drawing our attention, it's drawing our eyes to the part that we want uh, our audience and our viewer to take a look at. Again, anything within those two planes will be in focus. Anything in front or, out or behind will be out of focus. A leg's behind... And so it's slightly out of focus, as you can see there. And it makes it a little bit of a better, more impressive image to look at, rather than with depth of field turned off, compared to depth of field turned on. Makes it a little bit more stand out. Now, a final little thing that I want to take a quick look at uh, under cameras is this dimensions tab that you can see here. What this does, it opens up this little window, use local dimensions. If we click that to on, you can see something's changed there where I'll get onto in a minute, but you can see that we've got a, an almost copy of what we've got over here in the render settings. Now, what we're able to do is to set this individually for each 
camera so in this particular camera with main camera set we can see it's got an aspect ratio of three uh width and a height of two that's why we're getting this slightly rectangle viewport if we turn local dimensions off you can see it now defaults back to this one up in the render settings but when we put local dimensions on you can see that we've got a different uh set up there in in our dimension it's based on these local dimensions rather than the global ones that we set up in the render settings so we are able to set up our camera and our view in any way that we want now there is a little bug in this if i set it into my standard aspect ratio that, that i tend to go with which is a 13 height and a 10 width as you can see it never really worked correctly what i have to do is you have to use the little boxes just to adjust it correctly it's just a little bug that i'm hopefully it'll get sorted out in a loop future version of uh daz and what i want to also do is set in my 4k uh resolution in this uh dime aspect ratio that we've got so now we've got this individual uh viewport that you can see which only exists with this camera if i come across back to perspective view you can see we go back to that square one that we had earlier and if we come back again onto main camera it's changed it into there now what that now the useful of that is if you have multiple cameras set up in one environment and you're going to have multiple different viewpoints of the same scene you can set all the cameras up separately to have their own aspect ratios their own dimensions their own this or that if you so wish it's a little time saver it's a little thing that not many people know about but it's why that's why i probably wanted to mention it here but the main thing that you'll look at as i mentioned is this camera setting to be able to set your depth of field and your focal lengths of your images uh and that's it really that's it with cameras as i said there are other things here like in blades or in lenses i mean i've played around with these things i've never seen them do anything uh they possibly do and you know if you're a camera engineer or you know all about cameras and photography you know please by all means drop down in the comments below what these things are and how they work because i've never been able to figure them out uh but that's it cameras that's how you put one into a scene that's uh, some of the options that you can play around with and the benefits that you play around with thank you for watching thank you for getting to the end if you got any questions or any comments you'd like to make drop them in the comments down below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can give the video a like and a share so other people get to see the video and if you haven't already subscribe and I will thank you very much for that. So for now, I'll catch you later. Bye-bye now.